Since we've been talking about waves, I thought it could be fun to show you a little bit about how a speaker works. Now this involves some other physics that's not really in waves, but that's okay. I mean, sometimes different fields sort of mix uh, what they're doing. So let's talk about, first of all, yeah, how a speaker actually works. Well, the first thing you need to make a speaker, let's sort of start off with just the speaker side, is a permanent magnet. So this involves something about magnetism. So this right here, this is a permanent. Permanent just means that it stays the same orientation. So a permanent magnet. In this case, then maybe it has a north over here and maybe the south is over there. So anyone who's played with magnets, you know magnets have a north and a south. Now what you also need though is something else. It's a different kind of magnet and we call this an electromagnet. So that's going to be something a little bit different. First of all, let me just maybe move this one over here. Just so it's a little bit easier to see here. So there goes. So there's a permanent magnet. Now what we need over here is what's called an electromagnet. Now this, the physics behind what goes on here is, um, well, it's not from waves. It actually belongs with electricity. In fact, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, run a current through this material. So this right here will be some sort of material. We call it ferromagnetic. So it'll be some sort of uh, metallic material where what you do is you coil a bunch of wire around it. So what you do then, let me just imagine. So this right here could be like... Um, a whole bunch of wire here being coiled around it. Now this wire right here, it's actually connected to something here. Okay, so this wire right here is connected to whatever source of um, music you want to listen to. So in this case right here, maybe this is your MP3 or your phone or your computer or whatever it is you're looking at, maybe your record, I mean, whatever this is iPod, whatever, whatever you're using. So what this does, I mean, this is a fairly complex uh, thing going on behind the scenes here, but what really happens is this thing gets connected to, um, well, basically a battery. And what we do here is we run some electricity through this wire. And whenever we do that, depending on the orientation of it, um, it's going to induce this thing right here, this piece of metal to become magnetic. So this is under, um, well, this is under induction, really. That's the, the physics behind it. So if you're ever curious how that works, look up induction and electromagnets, and you can find out what happens. But what happens then is it temporarily makes a north and south this way, or by reversing the direction of the uh, electric current here, you can actually flip this south and this north. So what this electromagnet does, it allows you to basically switch the north and south, or make it south and north. And what happens then is as you switch it back and forth, if you remember what happens with a north and a north, they don't like each other. They repel. So north and the north makes this one here want to go to the right. Whereas if you put a south and a north here, in other words, if you reverse the current, what would happen then? This thing would be attracted to the permanent magnet. So all you have to do then is just connect a cone to this thing right here, basically, like this. And this right here is some sort of big cone. So what happens then is this cone, as it moves back and forth, see all that happens with the music, the music just sends you the signal basically of, you know, I want it to go back and forth or forth and back. In other words, I want this thing to be attracted to the permanent magnet or repelled from the permanent magnet. That basically makes the cone go back and forth. The cone goes left and right, basically. So as this cone goes left and right, what then happens, um, so maybe I should put that down. So electromagnet, I'll put that down here, can switch north and south. It basically can switch them as you want to. So north and south this way or south and north. What that'll do, of course, is make this thing go back and forth, which means this cone will go back and forth here. And as this cone goes back and forth, well, what does that do? Well, that makes the air molecules. Remember, we were learning about these before with sound. So these are here your air molecules. And what happens to them is, of course, they get squished or they get areas where there's less of them. So what happens then is this basically, you know, causes these air molecules to pass on this signal, essentially. So what's happening then is these things are going to be rarefacted over here and compressed over here. And overall, then, your 
signal basically just moves to the right. So started off as something digital, gets converted to basically this cone going left and right. That passes through the air over here. So basically, by the way, this, this first section here, this right here, this is the speaker. That's how a speaker works, basically, is this, this piece right here. This is the air, and of course then we have to have the receiver. So what are you going to use to receive? You might use a microphone, or maybe you use a human. So maybe you have a person here, and this person maybe uh, has a big, big smile here. Whoops. Can't really draw very well, can I? Uh, not today, it seems. So let's just say this is someone here. You can see there's a reason why I'm not an artist. Uh, so here's a human who's very, very happy to be listening to the music here. But basically what happens is this person right here, oops, I guess they have another ear. Oh my God, this person does not look very realistic. <laughs> but what happens is this thing right here, you have this tympanic membrane. So what happens then is that these oscillations your, this little membrane right here in your ear, that oscillates back and forth. Right? Because these air molecules right here, as they were going back and forth and sending this signal to the right, that means then that, that causes this little membrane that you have in your ear to oscillate back and forth because of this air that was doing that. And that gets transmitted into your brain and says, ah, I hear something. So that's really how it works to hear something. So this is basically the whole process from speaker traveling through the air and then into your ear in this case if you're the receiver. If you're a microphone then of course it's something else that records the sound but it's a similar idea. So I think this is pretty interesting how a speaker you know is heard by you. Now of course you can have a very small version of this like when you wear your uh, headphones for example or a large-scale version like if you had a big big concert and the way this works then is, well, just like this right here, like this little animation from PHET. So this right here would be a speaker. And notice how the speaker is basically pushing back and forth. So that's really what's happening. That's because there's a permanent magnet and an electromagnet. And the electromagnet basically causes its pole to change north-south, south-north. And that means it's repelled or attracted to the permanent magnet, which is in here. Of course, what does that do? It pushes the air. Remember, we can look at this like this. We can actually see them like this right here. If I maybe increase the amplitude, that makes it louder. That basically makes it more obvious that these waves are flying by. Or I can make it like this right here. Now, what happens with the frequency? Well, that's how fast this thing moves. So if you want bass, for example, you want to push these air molecules slowly. So that's why you want your frequency to be very low. So in this case right here, just wait for it here. The frequency here is very, very low. In fact, maybe it's too low to really notice what's happening. So maybe your bass is like this, for example. Just wait a second for these to go away. There we go. So this here could be, for example, your bass. So this is like boom, boom, boom. So bass speakers are actually very big because you want to move this thing right here slowly, but you want to move in a big, big way but very slowly in speed. And frequency, remember, is something to do with units per second. So in this case, frequency is in you know seconds to the minus one. What it really tells you then is how fast something goes per second. So if you want high frequency sound, for example, then you have to go many times per second. So notice how fast the speaker has to move. It's like bing, 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 bing. And notice then you see very, very short distance between these. So this right here would be your high pitch. So these right here would be your highs in your uh, speakers. That's why if you look at speakers, the ones that do the high pitch sounds are very small speakers. And then the mid-range ones are sort of medium-sized. And then the big bass speakers, well, they're very, very large, but they move very, very slowly in comparison to the tiny little ones here. Now, if you move them too fast, what can happen? The actual speaker can sort of rip. So there's, there are some issues that can happen there. Now, here's just a diagram of uh, a more realistic diagram of a speaker. But this is really what happens. You have your permanent magnet here that it sits on. So this, let's say it has a north here and a south here. Let's just pretend. And then you have your coil. This right here is your electromagnet. And that's connected to a plus and a minus, which basically that goes to your... Uh, sound device. So whatever it is that you're plugged into. 
like I said, maybe it's a CD player if you're old school or a record player or whatever. Whatever you're using to generate the signal goes into here and basically causes this thing to maybe have a north and a south or a then it can flip it and make this a south and a north. That makes this thing right here get repelled or attracted to this permanent magnet. That essentially means since this cone is attached to this, the cone goes up and down. Of course, in real life, it's got to be actually sitting in something. So you have this thing like the basket that it sits on and the spider right here that can stretch. But basically, that's just the main idea behind how speakers work. This is a very simplistic diagram. This is how it works.